there are a variety of tools at our disposal on the main toolbar. Some of the most commonly used tools include the window and level feature, which allows us to adjust the contrast and density of the image by holding down the right mouse button and dragging it across the image. The image quality of this film is fairly good. The zoom tool allows us to increase or decrease the overall size of the image by left clicking and holding down the left mouse button and rolling the mouse forward we can increase the size of the image and by holding the left mouse button down and pulling the mouse backward towards us we can decrease the size of the image. Mm -hmm. The Bone Enhance feature can be accessed by right-clicking on the image and selecting Bone Enhance from the drop-down menu. This allows us to sharpen the visibility of the bony cortex and trabeculation. The Invert Contrast tool allows us to view the image as a negative. This makes it easier to see a fine bone cortex fracture or to locate a soft tissue structure that may not be clearly visible to us in regular viewing mode. The center point tool can be used to find the exact center between two anatomical points that you place on an image. For example, if you wanted to find the center of the frame and magnum, you could use the center point tool and click on the left MIT of the condyle and the right MIT of the condyle, and the software generates an exact center point between these two anatomical points. The Cobb's Angle Tool allows us to measure the angle of a scoliosis in a given region of a patient's spine. To draw a Cobb's Angle, click on the Cobb's Angle Tool on the main toolbar. Then click on the left aspect of the superior end plate of the most superior vertebra that contributes to the scoliosis. Then click on the right aspect of that same end plate. Click on the left aspect of the inferior end plate of the lowest vertebra that contributes to the scoliosis. And then click on the right aspect of that same end plate. And Cobb's angle is automatically displayed on the image. You can move the angle to the exact point where you would like to place it on the image. George's line tool is used to assess anteriority or posteriority of vertebral segments. We can use the George's line tool and start by clicking the top of each vertebra at its posterior aspect and the bottom of each vertebra at its posterior aspect. And as we do this, George's line is created for each vertebra. By looking at the arrows associated to the given line, we can see the amount of offset of the vertebra we're assessing in relation to the vertebra below. For example, C3 is malpositioned posteriorly in relation to C4 by 0.81 millimeters. C5 is malpositioned anteriorly in relation to C6 by 2.24 millimeters. The Ilium
volume analysis tool is used to analyze the AP pelvic or AP lumbopelvic image. We'll be placing a series of 16 points on the image. It's important to remember that we must place these points in exact order, starting with the top of the left iliac crest, moving from left to right across the image, and finishing with the bottom of the right ischial tuberosity. So let's begin the analysis. First point, place at the top of the left iliac crest, followed by the right iliac crest, the left sacral notch, and the right sacral notch, the first sacral tubercle, the lateral aspect of the left ilium, the lateral aspect of the left sacrum, the medial aspect of the left ilium, the medial aspect of the right ilium, lateral aspect of the right sacrum, lateral aspect of the right ilium, now to the top of the left femur head and the right femur head, the center of the symphysis pubis, the bottom of the left ischial tuberosity, and finally finishing with our final and sixteenth point at the bottom of the right ischial tuberosity. Notice that when I make my sixteenth and final click at the bottom of the right ischial tuberosity, the full sacral and pelvic analysis is displayed on the image. When you get used to using the ilium analysis software, the whole process of ilium analysis can be completed comfortably in about 60 seconds. And this is a huge time saver for a busy chiropractic office. Spine labels can be used to mark each vertebra in a given region of the spine from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top.